So today, Dr. Schultz, we thought I thought we'd talk about prostate cancer staging. You know, when someone is diagnosed with prostate cancer, it's always overwhelming to be diagnosed with cancer in general, but now you're told all these new terms and all these new acronyms and all these new things and what type of cancer do you have? And I think that a lot of times, especially in the standard of care, we lump prostate cancer into one bucket when there's so many different types and we really need to make sure we're having individualized care. So when it comes to staging, maybe we could just do a breakdown quickly about what is stage one, two, three, four, and I know there are nuances within them, but let's just start with that. Well, there are many different staging systems so that makes it even more complicated. Um, let's start, let's back up a minute and say why is staging important? Uh, the issue of staging, of course, is to help align you with the right treatment. And prostate cancer treatment can have irreversible toxicity and side effects that can last the rest of your life. If you have a more minor type of prostate cancer that doesn't need such strong treatment. You certainly don't want to administer it because you could end up with side effects that you could have avoided. So that is why figuring out what type of prostate cancer it is, the so-called stage, is uh, so important. Stage is a general term. You would think that, well, that just sort of how big is the cancer and how far has it gone? That would be the stage of disease. That's sort of what stage means. But in the prostate cancer world, it doesn't just mean how big is the cancer and how far is it gone. It also means uh, what is the chance for it to metastasize? And that is often based on the grade or the Gleason score. Staging in prostate cancer uh, is uh, at least the useful ones that we incorporate for helping people decide what to do um, are based both on how big the tumor is, how far it's gone, and the grade of the tumor as it would appear under the microscope or sometimes how fast it's going based on how fast PSA is rising. So all these factors are incorporated into staging. I wrote a whole book on this. It's called the, uh, the Key to Prostate Cancer. And the key is accurate staging so that you have a clear understanding of what type of prostate cancer. So then once you have the right diagnosis, you can get guided to the right treatment. One thing that confuses a lot of people is that there are other staging systems other than the most commonly used low, intermediate, and high-risk prostate cancer for newly diagnosed PSA relapsed and advanced metastatic or hormone resistant. Five general categories, which in the book we give colors to, uh, sky, teal, azure, indigo, and royal. And so these are five big categories, and they are then substaged into low, basic, and high in each of those categories. You're looking at 15 different stages of prostate cancer, um, in, in the spectrum of the disease in general. This uh, so-called is based on something called the D'Amico staging system, which was developed to more than 20 years ago. And I'd say it's the most widely adopted staging system. However, there are clinical stages. That's how big does the tumor feel when you, when you do a digital rectal exam. There's pathologic staging. That's how, how, how much cancer uh, is in the prostate and has it spread through the edge or into the seminal vesicle or in the lymph nodes. When you ask about staging, which system are you talking about? I would contend that it's the D'Amico staging system that's far and away the most useful one. Doesn't mean that the other staging systems don't have a role. But uh, when asking about staging, you know, patients say, am I stage one, two, three, four? Or am I a stage A, B, C, D? Those sorts of systems are often used in other cancer types. And there are some letter systems in the prostate cancer world, such as uh, stage uh, D1 for indigo or lymph node disease, stage D2 for spots on the bones or, uh, or, or lymph nodes spread throughout the body. So that is not as useful in my mind because you always want to have a broad perspective in terms of where you fit in the, the overall prostate cancer picture because that's going to give you a beginning point to decide if someone's talking about treatment if you've got a very favorable stage, shouldn't they be talking about minimal or no treatment? And if you've got a more advanced stage, shouldn't they be talking about aggressive combination treatment? The answer is yes. It gives you, the patient, a perspective on what kind of treatment is forthcoming. And if you're you know, in a situation with a doctor who maybe is not as up to date or has an agenda to do a certain type of treatment, it'll help protect you from making big mistakes. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you, we're a nonprofit, and if you would like to join our cause to get videos out to people all over the world, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation with Dr. Scholz about staging. 
Let's talk about the fact that the medical community, you know, when someone gets diagnosed with prostate cancer, a lot of times they're being pushed into something really quickly. And we always encourage all the patients to do a lot of research. But do you feel that patients focus on quality of life at all when they're thinking about cancer treatments and all the patients that you've seen in your office? Or are they focusing on just taking care of the cancer and living my life in survivorship? I've seen a big shift ever since the PCRI started releasing these videos. And I'm seeing uh, much more conversant and uh, up-to-date patients who are starting to prioritize their quality of life. But if you go back five years, my general experience was that most of my initial consultations were with terrified people who were thinking that they had to have treatment within you know, a couple weeks or the cancer is going to spread and they might die. That is rarely the case in prostate cancer. So uh, it is true with other cancers, sadly, but not with prostate. So I've seen a shift, but your point is well taken. That idea of balancing quality of life, in other words, using just enough treatment to get rid of the cancer with consistent good results, but not too much treatment that incurs urinary problems, sexual problems, and uh, uh, you know, long-term side effects. This balancing act between get the job done right and don't cause unnecessary harm is part of the skill when we're talking about this big spectrum of different types of prostate cancer. Now, I appreciate that because when I read the comment section, you know, it's, they're talking about doctors have taken this Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. And I don't think in prostate cancer, I see a shift, I now see a shift, but I don't think in prostate cancer in general, that's the first thought. It's always cut it out, let's get it out, let's deal with it, all the fear, all the emotions, and then the limited communication you're getting with your medical team. And I don't think that people even understand when you're in a doctor's office and you're dealing with the medical team itself, you're also dealing with the insurance company behind it who's going to either approve or not prove it, the institutions and what they're trying to measure and what they're trying to get paid for. There's so much money involved, and I don't feel that even doctors are talking about the proper staging with patients in order to help them clarify where they're at so they do get the right treatment and they you know, only get what they really need or what the, uh, the most optimal treatment would be in order to save their, their sex lives, you know, incontinence, all these issues that they're having. So when it comes to staging, you know, we have a quiz on the PCRI website where they can answer a couple questions and they can find out what type of stage they're in. But when you're coming, having people walk into your office, is that the first question, you know, the first like setup you have with them is, do you know your prostate cancer stage? Do I need to explain this to you? Because I would imagine in Dr. Schulz's office, it would be the optimal conversation. Yes. Many of the patients now we see already know their stage and which is very gratifying. And that is the first step. That's why uh, I named the, the, this book, which is essentially on staging, the key to prostate cancer. So knowing where you fit in that spectrum is the first step. You have to know that stage. And our plan, uh, since we haven't done staging videos for some time, is to go back maybe uh, and by stage address these things more, especially since with PSMA PET scans, the methodology we're using for staging has changed a lot. The PSMA PET scans came out in early 2022. This book was published a year or two prior to that. So, um, so that's going to be necessary to go through it. But I think we should just briefly summarize what these stages are. In the book, they're assigned colors, but I'll just use the D'Amico low intermediate high risk system. So uh, low risk prostate cancer is uh, pure grace Gleason 3 plus 3 and a PSA less than 10 generally. Uh, teal or intermediate risk is Gleason uh, 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3, a, gla a grade 7. It's called a grade group 2 in the, in the um, Epstein system. Again, these men could have a PSA up to 19 or 20, uh, and they, uh, none of these men are allowed to have any cancer, of course, outside the prostate, whether it's sky, low grade, low, low risk, or teal, intermediate risk. High risk is a grade over of eight or higher, PSA of 20 or more, and you don't have to have all of these, just one, uh, spread into the uh, seminal vesicles. Also, in our system, we call it azure. Stage D, or indigo, lymph nodes, or a rising PSA after surgery is another uh, situation, a rising PSA after previous radiation. These are all in the indigo category. And then the royal category, people with either uh, metastasis to the bone 
for who have been on hormone treatment in the past and now their PSAs are starting to rise, so-called hormone resistance or castrate resistance. So those are the five general categories and I think we're going to need to come back and address them individually in much more detail now that we have PET scans, which pretty much change all the categories. I'd say the sky category has remained pretty intact with PSMA PET scans. We don't usually do PSMA PET scans in the sky category. These are the men that usually get active surveillance if they're treated properly. But as we advance up the stages, the PSMA PET scans uh, definitely change a staging and they also change the way we think of treating, which is, as I said before, staging is what guides you to the right type of treatment. If the stage changes because of a PET scan, the treatment's gonna change. So we have to update our, our uh, methodologies for uh, using staging to select treatment. When we get patients coming into the helpline or we see the comment section or just patients interacting with us, when somebody says, oh, I have stage four cancer and they're told that from their doctor, a lot of times they think, okay, it's over, it's stage four, this is it. And there's only a couple treatments available. When in reality, there are so many variations even within you know, what we would call royal. And so it's, it's this big situation where patients are given a label and then it causes an emotional reaction instead of giving them clarity of what stage they have and what their options are and then really what what they can do and what the next steps are afterwards you know we talk about treatment plans side effect mitigation plans but the planning of knowing that there are other treatments besides the current one maybe you're even your doctor's talking to you about really gives a lot of hope and so um, i'm hoping through the staging system we're able to to bring some hope and clarity to that stage four prostate cancer if people have some spread to a bone or something like that. Now, let's say they didn't check their PSAs and they come to the doctors and their PSA is 100 and they've got a scan that shows some spread to the bones. The vast majority of these individuals, 80, 90, 95%, will uh, achieve a complete remission with modern treatment. Combination of hormones, uh, usually radiation therapy to the metastatic sites, possibly 10 weeks of, of a, a mild chemotherapy medicine and PSA will become undetectable, scans will become clear in almost everybody. That is very different than most other types of cancers, and we're very, very fortunate in the prostate cancer world that we've got such powerful tools now, they're very effective, and these remissions that are achieved in these people with uh, metastatic disease at the time of diagnosis are, are common, and they're durable. People live many years. So it's not that the treatment is, is mild, but it is certainly very effective. So today I talked to Dr. Scholz about prostate cancer staging. This is something that's very important because the stage is not just a label of what you know, you're given, stage one, two, three, or four. Maybe you've already been given a stage. But the truth is a stage is how large is your prostate? Where is the tumor? What type of Gleason score is the tumor? What is the PSA? All of that information is very important. We want you to have optimized care. Optimized care means you know the most information you possibly can about your particular type of prostate cancer. There are certain types of prostate cancer that react to certain treatments better and vice versa. So it's important to know, I have this type of prostate cancer. It's not just a, an overall bucket or label, you know, stage one, stage two, stage three. It's specific. This is the type of prostate cancer. This is how the cancer is going to act. Here's the percentage likelihood of it metastasizing. Here's the information that I need. The more information you have, the better. Now you may say, why do I need to know this instead of my doctor? The main point is if you know it, when you go get different opinions, when you're talking to your doctor, the more information that you have about the stage and when you're reading up and doing your research, it can help you understand which treatments are available to you and help you advocate. Maybe your doctor isn't mentioning a treatment to you that you've read about or that you've learned about that you want to discuss with him. You know, it'll give you a better knowledge of you being able to advocate for yourself. The bottom line is we want you to have optimized care, individualized medicine. And in a world where, you know, we have a lot of insurance companies and what gets covered and what doesn't, Individualized care isn't always the priority, but you can prioritize individualized care for yourself, and that's the most important. If you need help with your specific questions, you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. They can help answer your questions, and that way you could have better conversations with your medical team. And if you would like to subscribe uh, to these videos, we come out with prostate cancer videos and men's health videos like this every week. It's an honor to be able to do it. Also, like the video if it was helpful for you. And if you have specific questions that you want me to ask Dr. Scholz, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. We really appreciate that activity. It helps us to know what to create in the future. We appreciate that you trust us. Please remember you're not alone, and I hope you have a great week.